What's up everybody? Byron here from ETA. And we are here today shooting the tabletop in-depth review on the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus Carry Comp. Do apologize, I had to stop there for a moment uh, because I just got done doing the Big Brother, the M&P 2.0. Compact carry comp. So let's talk about this gun. What are the advantages of it? What are the disadvantages of it? Who is it for? And why have I decided that this is my new everyday carry gun? Well, let's get into it. So, first off, can't talk about the gun without talking about the comp. Check that out. Isn't that beautiful? The way that they've machined it, it's wonderful. This has the same chunk port that is on its bigger brother. <coughs> You can see here, let me hide my eyes so the camera will track it. If you look here, you can see. What this does is it very effectively redirects the gases to the sides and up. With most of the gas getting redirected up and enough gas getting redirected to the side so that you don't foul your front sight. At the back here is another, so if we can get it to come out, right here. There is another redirection cut. So what that does is all of the gas that comes out of the back of the gun gets redirected to the side and straight up so that it doesn't cover your optic. What that means is less overall maintenance for your optic and less overall cleaning for the gun. However, it is a compensated gun, which means you will have more cleaning. Right off of the bat, I'm just gonna go ahead and say one of the stars of the show for me is this Performance Center trigger. If you own a Shield Plus with a Performance Center trigger and you change the trigger, I don't know what it is that you're you're trying to achieve, okay? There is no need to do that, in my opinion. Who am I? I'm just one guy. I'm not you at the end of the day. I will tell you to give this trigger 500 rounds or so before it really comes to life and then start formulating your opinion. But get to a thousand rounds through the gun and you may not want to change the trigger because there's not a whole lot you're going to accomplish. What do I mean by that? That's the trigger pull. Nice reset. You got your standard take up and you're on the wall. Boom. There's your reset. Boom. Very, very nice gun. If you're looking for a carry gun, especially like this, you can really rock those follow-up shots with this gun. Which, let's be honest, if you're carrying a small 9mm like this, you're not going to one-shot stop it. You're going to be three or four rounds. Physics is physics, and it hasn't changed for years. So, the gun in the box comes with a 13, a 15, and a 10-round 10, 10 magazine. I purchased an additional 13 and a 15 round for training, and I find in practice that I carry with the 13 round magazines because I find that to be the most overall comfortable and the best overall balance. So this is a true chameleon of a carry gun, and one of the reasons why this that was a big deciding factor for me in making this my everyday carry gun. So with the 10 rounder, you have a very nice, very short grip and have the minimal chance of printing with a very small footprint. Quite honestly, this is one of the best holsters I've ever used in my life. Uh, and I will be ordering one of these for my shadow systems as well in the near future. But the choice of holster is individual and it's up to you, the viewer. I can just tell you that I like it. It's got a lot of features I like. If I was choosing to carry this with a tucked in shirt, I would damn sure carry it with a 10 round magazine and you can tuck a Sertum 3. However, most of the time, for the people that know me, I wear an Aloha shirt or a wear shirt like this. The 13 round magazine is my jam. Why? Look at, look at the difference. I got a full firing grip with a 13 round magazine. When I'm at the range, now I've got a actual full-size grip firearm. And this, if you're gonna be shooting accurately, this is gonna be theoretically the most accurate configuration. But I find right here, these 13 rounders, it just feels right, it carries right, it balances right, and I get a full firing grip. The only other pistol that I've ever owned 
for an EDC that allows me to do that is my G48. And as you can tell, to get that full firing grip. I'm going to directly compare these two. They're both 4-inch guns. Okay. I personally do not care for the G43 or the 43X size pistols. I like the G48. What I have found over my, my years of experience carrying is that smaller than a 4-inch is just not that much fun to shoot. And if you don't enjoy shooting it, you're not going to carry it. And if you're not going to carry it, then what's the point? Now, between the two, this is a much better shooter. However, it's hard to go wrong with old reliable. Does everything that it needs to do. That was just for a quick comparison for some of the Glock fanboys out there. I'm not a Glock fanboy. I'm not a Smith fanboy. I'm a closet CZ nerd. This was the first Smith & Wesson pistol that I willingly purchased. It wasn't a revolver. Do that what you will. One complaint that you will hear many reviewers say, or at least I found reviewers to say, is that the recoil spring is quite heavy. And it is. But that's part of what makes this such a smooth shooting gun. So who's this gun for? If you have lowered hand strength or some serious arthritis, you may want to look more towards the easy line than the carry comp performance center. Just throwing that out there, okay? These slide serrations, these triangle serrations are very nice. They go up over the top, they go up over the back. Now, what is one feature that's on the M&P 2.0 that's not on this? I would love to see them build in a cocking shelf like there is on its uh, big brother. But it occurred to me as I was using the pistol, once I got to about a thousand rounds, it clicked. See this little part back here? That effectively accomplishes the same thing without a flared portion at the rear end so that you have as slick as a possible carry setup. And, and that just keeps reducing the footprint. There's a lot of people that complain that this gun doesn't have a light rail on it. I am firmly in the other camp. This gun does not need a light rail. This gun is not designed. You're, you're not going to be in a sustained firefight with this thing, guys. This is designed so that you can quickly and accurately put rounds on target and get out of a bad situation and get yourself and your family to safety, okay? This is, you don't need a light in a mall. You don't need a light at a gas station unless you're one of those people that's working third shift, at which point, yeah, maybe potentially I would want to look at putting a light on here. And there are lighting options available as well as a recover tactical rail. I didn't test that because it's not something that enters my needs for a carry gun. Do I feel that this is about as perfect as a carry gun as there is? Yes, I do. Why? First off, I have very big hands. That should give you an idea of the scale of the gun. It's a very narrow gun. In fact, it is more narrow than my G48. It is about an inch wide at its widest point. It is not ambidextrous. So if God hates you, I'm sorry. Though I do believe you can swap the mag catch. The left hand side, and you would have to slingshot the last round or the first round. Which you should do anyway, rather than using the slide stop. That's neither here nor there. Um, this is a gun that I fired it with the Shadow CR920. And I did a thousand round review on the CR920 and this at the same time. And that, that CR920 knocked me silly. So I can tell you that I personally do not enjoy a G43 size firearm. Notice I did not say G43X. It is a G43 size firearm. This is a little bit bigger than a G43. Here's my G48. We'll give you a little size comparison for the grips. The G48 has a little bit more real estate on the grip. The G43X, by the way, has the same grip frame as the G48. The difference is in the four inch barrel. One of my key complaints about the 43X and the 48 is how slippery this damn finish is. It's slick. I don't have that problem with this. Even if I grab it where it's non-serrated, my fingers are not sliding all over the damn place like they do on the Glock. So if you're a Glock fanboy, maybe pick up one of these and try it. If you are looking for a striker-fired handgun with an exceptional trigger that is exceptionally easy to shoot, this is the one. And I'm really doing my best not to overhype this gun. It really is worth every bit of hype that you read about this pistol. And, and I, I will very rarely say that about anything, but as, as Honest Outlaw says, we are in the golden age of firearms, right? You've got a blacked out rear sight, you've got a tritium front. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus. 
There it is. Once you go through learning the body mechanics of drawing and presenting the pistol, you'll find that the sights just almost magically line up. That's, that's a, especially with a 13 round magazine. And I find that every time I press it out, I'm not hunting for the sights. Obviously you can run an optic on this if you want to. It has been reported by multiple people on the forum that the optic pocket sometimes has a little bit of a variance from the factory. I personally have not experienced that. I measured my own gun and I don't find it to be a problem. However, I would advise you, if you're gonna put a dot on this, try to find a dot with more than 30 MOA of adjustment, should you choose, for whatever reason, to go out beyond a 21 meter zero. Yes, 21 meters. That's quite a ways away for a small, subcompact, nine millimeter handgun in a defensive encounter. So, <laughs> I can consistently, with iron sights, ring a six inch steel target, 25, yards. I can consistently hit it 9 out of 13 rounds. I can hit it with 124s, I can hit it with 115s, and I can hit it with my 147 carry loads. The hotter the ammo you run through this gun, the more that compensator mitigates recoil. There are a bunch of hype videos right now saying that, oh the compensator deletes recoil! Ah! I call bullshit. You might notice a 30% give or take reduction in recoil. And then they follow that up and they go, oh, the gun shoots flat. It's amazing. The gun doesn't shoot flat, okay? It's a bullet. It shoots in an arc. What they're attempting to describe is that when the gun goes off, instead of having a sharp muzzle rise because you have a super lightweight gun, you have a much lower muzzle rise and you're able to return back to your target that much faster, which enables you to get your follow-on shots that much faster. If you are shooting this gun fast, you will absolutely appreciate this compensator. You really will. Uh, there's not much else on the market, except for this guy, and we're gonna talk about him later, that can do what this gun does for this price point. You can go small, what I call normal, or giant. However you choose to carry this, IWB, OWB, dick shooter, you can do it. There are certain accommodations made for people that are left-handed. So if God hates you, there's still some hope. You just can't use the slide release. That's all. Let's talk about the slide release. Some of my earlier footage, you'll notice that I had an issue with the slide release. It is notoriously stiff on an M&P firearm. It does become usable after a while. Gotta break the damn thing in, okay? So shoot this gun a lot. Shoot it a lot. This thing doesn't even become too hot to hold until you get to about the 300 round point, at which point you're going to want to set it down and let it cool off a little bit. I fired 300 rounds of this just as fast and as quickly as I could get them loaded up in the three magazines that it comes with. Yes, it comes with three magazines, and that's perfect. So, if you want the smallest possible footprint, and a really good choice for a backup magazine. You can carry it this way. You have all the benefits of a small frame and you're still getting on target. You've got your 10 rounds. Now you reload and you got another 13 in the gun. Or you can carry it with Big Daddy and go from 10 to 15. That gives you 25 rounds total. Or if you carry all three magazines, 15 plus 10 is 25 plus 13. 38 rounds. That's a lot of damn ammo for concealed carry. I like the 13 round magazine. They are just that perfect little happy spot for me. And I carry it with the 13 round magazine as my backup magazine. Everybody will be different. When I first got the gun, I carried the 15 round as my backup mag. Stumbled across an awesome deal. I bought a 13 and a 15 round mag for $10.95. I absolutely love this pistol. This is not me trying to hype a product. This is not me trying to justify my purchasing decision. This is me telling you, if you guys have followed my channel for a while, you'll notice I don't really get super excited about guns. This is a compact gun. This is the gun that I've been searching for uh, almost for two years now. I've been looking for a gun that I can carry concealed everywhere, no matter how I dress, that I can accurately engage targets out to 21 meters, has a four inch barrel, which in my opinion, and through my own testing, a four inch barrel is about where you wanna be for a micro-sized pistol to get a more 
guaranteed result of a hollow point expansion. You can look up the physics, you can look up the, the velocity loss of a 3.1 inch, 3.3, 3.4, 3.6, and 4 inch barrel to your heart's content. Just know that with the slightly longer barrel, you're gonna get a more reliable result. Now, a lot of ported guns lose velocity because you're losing energy. This does not have that problem. And unlike many, for example, the, the early Magna ported guns or guns that are like the Magna porting, if you don't back bore into the uh, lands and the grooves, you're going to potentially run into a situation where you, where you can shave off a little bit of that copper jacket and send it directly back into the face of whoever's shooting the gun. You do not have that concern with this chunk port design. This is, even though it says it's a four inch barrel, the lands and the grooves, the rifling stops at the beginning of the port chamber and the port chamber is larger than the inner diameter of the barrel. What that means is that the pressure has a chance to normalize behind the projectile before it exits the port. So you don't have to worry about potentially scraping off part of a bullet and sending it flying into the stratosphere, into somebody standing beside you, or back into your face. I've shot several ported guns that do exactly that, and it is all kinds of not fun when it happens. You don't have to worry about that with this. Kudos to Smith for an excellent design. Are there some negatives? Well, yes, but they're very few. And I have to really, really, really nitpick to get at it. One, I feel it is slightly oversprung. So you could conceivably install a lighter recoil spring in the gun, okay? Again, that's overly nitpicking it. I haven't had a single short stroke on this gun outside of the first 50 rounds that I put through the gun. And, and to be very honest, a lot of that was simply my grip, forcing the slide stop up. I was transitioning over from the CR920 to firing this on the same day. This has a little bit of a different grip than that. So the first time firing it, it took me a little bit to, to, to get to where I'm a happy, happy guy with the grip, okay? So is that really a concern? No, because if you buy this for a first carry gun, this is it. And I very rarely ever say that about a quote unquote micro nine. What makes it a micro nine? The 1.5 stash magazine. That's what makes it a micro nine. And the fact that it's about an inch thick. Let's go ahead. We're gonna compare it again to the G48. And because we're talking about compensated pistols, we'll go ahead and throw the CR920 into the mix. Now I've left the 13 round mag or inserted just because I want you to kind of get a feel for it. So you can see that the, the shadow has a bigger port. These, in my humble opinion, are more likely the direct competitors to one another, uh, simply because of their size, their footprint, barrel length, and everything. They are very similar shooting guns. However, I shoot this more quickly and more accurately than I can shoot the Shadow. I do not feel the need to put an optic on this pistol, simply because of how freaking awesome these irons really are. Try it for yourself, and you might agree with me. Some people are just diehard red dot, green dot, optic fans, good for you. The gun is set up so that you can do that. You do not need a plate for this gun. It is natively milled for a 407, 507, or RMSC footprint. So any of those should theoretically fit on here without any, no need for a funky adapter plate. And yes, yes, in fact, with a 407 or a 507, your sights Co-witness, you don't even have to change sights. Put the damn optic on, torque it down, zero it, and away you go. If that's your thing, good for you. What I found is that I typically do a 21 meter zero, okay? So I have a laser bore sighter. I use that to get me kind of sort of in the ballpark, and then I just kind of dial it in from there. But I like a 21 meter zero. That's about the maximum distance that I'm gonna to wanna to engage something with this pistol. Uh, and more importantly, that's backed up by a lot of uh, legal research on the topic. So you can do with that whatever you want. This gun is slightly thinner than this gun. But this gun, believe it or not, I enjoy shooting this more than I enjoy shooting its bigger brother, the M&P 2.0 Compact. This is a very light, very handy, and most important, a very well-balanced firearm. It's just really well-balanced. This one as well, by the way. 
I'm going to be doing a much more in-depth comparison between the two, how they shoot, see which one mitigates recoil better, and see which one may be a better choice for you, the viewer. That's going to be coming in an upcoming and future uh, review in Tabletop. Who's this for? If you have big hands and you don't like an FN reflex size pistol or a Hellcat size pistol or the 365, hi, that's me, this gun may be for you. With a proper IWB setup like this, you can carry this appendix, you can carry it strong side, I carry it strong side just behind the hip blade. I find that where I can draw from a car while seated, even with the seat belt on, doesn't impede my operation of the pistol or getting this pistol into play. You can carry an appendix, you have that option. Uh, I don't have the claw mounted simply because I don't need it. I'm not carrying appendix. But I find that this combo to be a phenomenal combo. As you can see, it accommodates pretty much whatever optic you want to throw on there. Overall, I would go as far to say is for 2024, and in fact, 2025, this is the gun to beat if you're looking for the ultimate concealed carry firearm with a pistol that is comfortable enough that you can enjoy extended range day sessions and not have the gun knock you silly. Take a blood sacrifice like my shadows do. I have no issues with slide bite on this gun. It has an 18 degree grip angle. I get a very nice two hand grip on the gun. Even if I'm firing it one-handed, even if I'm firing it left-handed, I shoot this gun better than absolutely anything I have ever fired in this size category, with the exception of the G48. And I've shot a lot of guns in this size category, and I've carried a lot of guns. This is, to date, my favorite in CO carry firearm that I have ever owned. So, let's, let's get the discussion popping on this pistol. Tell me down in the comments below. Do you have one of these? Do you have a regular Shield Plus? How do you like it? Do you think it would be worth upgrading from a four inch Shield Plus to this? If you're not a Shield fan, what do you carry? Why do you choose to carry that? What do you think of my reviews? What can I do better? I'm here for you guys. If you have questions about this gun, I don't care if it's a dumb question. Ask me. I will answer your question to the best of my ability. You can find me on Reddit. You can find me on etamediaservices.com. Or you can find me here on YouTube. And Rumble. I'm here for you guys. I want to answer your questions. I want to prevent you from making a more expensive mistake. If, if you're thinking about purchasing your very first concealed carry handgun, this would be my number one recommendation right here. This would be my number two recommendation. If you've never owned a firearm, specifically a semi-automatic pistol, and you're looking to get a concealed carry gun or a do-it-all gun, this would be a great choice. So feel free to ask your questions. I'm Byron, and you guys have a great rest of your day. This gun is never leaving my collection. I love it. I really do. I really, really genuinely I'm not saying that because I'm supposed to be hyping this gun. I'm telling you that because I genuinely feel this way. It is a phenomenal gun. Later.